All right, let's move on from that and uh, bring you our person of interest. Now, the entire theme of today's episode seems to be sustainability, so why not bring in the summer in it? Now, we all know that Indian summers can be brutal and they are here already. With ACs becoming a necessity, so are skyrocketing electricity bills and environmental guilt. But what if cooling our homes didn't burn a hole in your wallet or even the planet? Say hello to the Ambiator. It's a made in India, eco-friendly cooling solution that's turning the traditional AC game on its head. But how eco-friendly is it exactly and what makes it so eco-friendly? We're going to take a deep dive into all of that. The co-founders say it runs on regular tap water, uses mm. smart IoT Internet of Things tech to manage it efficiently and it cuts electricity bills by up to 80%. But we're going to take a look at all of these numbers, break it down with them right here on the show. It's the brainchild of two Hyderabad-based engineers, Tiger and JD, who set out to fix India's cooling crisis with a smarter, greener alternative. So let's bring them on the program. Hi guys, good morning. Tiger Astor, hey, he's morning. the co-founder for Ambiator and Jitain Desai, JD as we know him now, co-founder as well. So let me first take it to you guys. Let's talk about the necessity and how the whole story started. Uh, Tiger, do you want to go first and tell us how did the Ambiator actually come into being? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm second generation into the field of cooling and earlier we used to serve only CNI customers. And then post COVID, there was a realization that, you know, we need to make uh, these kind of technologies that are energy saving more accessible to people. Hmm. Um, By and CNI so, for our audience, largely commercial sector, big, big, big projects, right? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And we wanted to work on something that was more accessible to people. So we brought down a modularized system. And that's where I met my co-founder JD at one of the demos. Um, and he absolutely loved the product and uh, we started our journey there after my dad passed away. Uh, he just gave me a call one day uh, about two months later and he said, hey, do you want to go and continue with this? And I said, yeah, but I don't want to do it alone. Hmm. And uh, he said, okay, I'll be with you. And that's how our journey started. We are two absolute strangers, hmm. but we've we've become close to family now but i think we are family now so, so that's that's the that's the genesis of the technology bringing it making it smaller making it more accessible hmm. how wonderful so it's a journey of obviously running a company together but also seemingly a journey of friendship jd if we could come to you and ask you give us the breakdown on why this is a good choice so i want to ask you on a few fronts water that is being consumed compared to other gadgets at home uh, i think i read in one of the info pieces that it's less than what a cooler would use but compare it to other gadgets in the home explain to us where it stands in, on electricity use and on water use right so the ambiator i think sits uh right in the center of where the AC and uh, we pick up the good things from AC and we pick up the good things from uh, coolers. And the good thing about this technology is that, uh, you know, when you're looking at water consumption on an annualized basis, it's about four liters per hour. So there are, we have an IoT module that looks at water consumption. So it can go as low as zero liters per hour when it's pleasant outside. Hmm. And in peak summer, it can go as high as 25, 26 liters, which is still what, uh, which is still less than what a normal cooler would uh, consume for five tons of cooling. And these are climate appropriate solutions. We are deploying these in hot and dry climates where there is no need to really dehumidify the space. And that's when you see your sinuses dry up, your skin dries up, etc. And with 100% fresh air, these are systems that provide excellent indoor air quality because there's no recirculation of air. So on the water front, we are more efficient. On electricity, we consume 80% less electricity at max peak load. Hmm. We use the latest BLDC technology and it's all modulated through our IoT module. And this allows us to continuously monitor and we collect a lot of rich weather data as well. Apart from uh, showing the energy use, we collect uh, the baseline 
of uh, CO2 emissions avoided as well. The air that we exhaust is also cooler and humid in nature. Mm -hmm. I see. Jiri, so uh, people are looking at the visuals on their screen while you guys talk about it. But just to sort of uh, give them an overview, uh, it's like a centralized air conditioning without calling it an AC, of course. It's a centralized cooling mechanism, if one can call it. Uh, so if you could tell us about the price and uh, in how big a space can one install. I'm thinking urban India solutions. If I stay in an apartment, can I really get it? So we've done uh, three BHKs, we've done G plus two villas. One unit can cool 750 square feet or 70 square meters of space. Hmm. These are outdoor systems, so we take ducts to bring the air inside. And these are modular scalable, one unit 750 square feet, two unit 1500 square feet. You can go all the way to seven and a half lakh square feet. So we are now an application agnostic system in hot and dry climates. We can do small studios all the way to cooling airports so the wow. applications are um hmm. yeah i mean every unit is similar than the last one so maintenance is very low these are compressor free technologies so we are not dealing with harmful refrigerants hmm. and uh, yeah we are changing the way people think about uh, acs and while it's transition from being a luxury to now a necessity there is an urgent need for it to being an affordable solution for the mass market. We are selling these at 60,000 rupees a ton. So a packaged 5 ton unit is 3.54 lakhs, including 18% tax. Hmm. So it compares well with the residential market where the ROI on the capital differential is recovered with 1800 hours of use. And with hmm. packaged current technologies, we are already cheaper uh, in CapEx by 30% and cheaper in OPEX by 80%. I see. Okay. okay. Uh, can we go Tiger to you for a second and ask you, I'm going to make you a defense lawyer for a second and ask you a question. Um, yeah. It feels almost like, you know, every November we hear about new air quality solutions and every summer we hear about new air cooling solutions. We often hear, you know, new products saying that they are eco-friendly. So that tag, I think, for Indian audiences, we're used to it, we're almost used to hearing, Are ye nahi cheez hai, but maybe not double-clicking on it. And I just want you to almost tell us how you feel this is actually something worthwhile for people to look into as an invention. How is it different from what already exists out there that other young companies are putting out? Look, I can share. I can share what what what, what we do. Um, so, when when the summer temperatures start rising to forty two degrees, forty three degrees, we're able to bring down and, and supply air around twenty two degrees C, which is just like an aircon. Um, no other technologies are able to do that. So, every technology has a limitation. Your fans are good till your body temperature. Anything above that, and you're evaporating from your sweat, and you're dehydrating. Then you have the technology of air coolers. So air coolers work really good all the way up to 39, 40 degree mark. Once it crosses 40 degrees, they start to fail uh, because they just don't have the capacity to, to keep removing that much heat that is there in the air. Then you've got the air conditioners. They do the job, but as they are trying to do that job, they are also increasing the energy bills because they are designed for a certain temperature, which is the coastal temperature of 35 degrees. Whereas we are not in a 35 degree environment anymore. We are all crossing 40 degrees across India. Mm. Uh, and uh, that's where we come in as with, with our large differentiator. Uh, and coming to air quality in November in Delhi, God help Delhi. Uh, I mean, get those cars off your road, please. Uh, there, there's no easy uh, one fix to that. And yes, there will be air purifiers that will come into the market. Um, there'll be plenty of products that would be in the sub 20, 30,000 range that would come in, do your due diligence, have a look at it, study it, and, and, and then click to buy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can I uh, sort of then, am I understanding this correctly when you say that you talked about the different, uh, you know, pros and cons of having different cooling mechanisms. Are you saying if you have an ambiator, you do not need an AC? And I'm talking North India? Yeah, in North India, peak summers, you would not need an AC, but when it comes July 13th onwards, hmm. uh, North India ends up in a humidity dome where the weather becomes extremely muggy. Hmm. And at that point of time, 
Uh, the majority of the population who doesn't use ACs is, is kind of used to it, but the people who are in air conditioning continuously, uh, they are the ones uh, who have a problem going in and out of buildings. So you end up with thermal shocks or you end up with humidity shocks. Hmm. So um, July to July to September, uh, our systems will not function in that place because we do not have the capacity hmm. to remove humidity from the air. And I say that very cautiously, but I say it not yet. Hmm. We're working on it. We'll get there. All okay. right. Appreciate the honesty over there. Can, uh, I, can yeah. I just shift the topic a little bit and ask hmm. you a little bit around what it's like to build with someone you've never known before, but you're building <laughs> a relationship with and a friendship with at the same time. JD, you've not taken us into the behind the scenes. So share with us some stories, you know, challenges that happen, incidents where you've had to, you know, maybe talk through the night to solve it. What does that actually look like? What, what was that meme? Uh, you are the water to my cooler, something like that. Maybe. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to draw an analogy. <laughs> no, so I think this is one of the myth busters, right? A lot of uh, times people want to bucket us with, you know, how long have you known your co-founder? where did you meet and how did it evolve we met by chance right and uh, we've now known each other for more than three years so it's it's been a fantastic journey but the second point is that we are mature i'm 40 he's 50 and we sort of have no longer those qualms on smaller things that maybe if we were younger we would have issues with and uh, both of us have clear cut responsibilities so that's another reason as co-founders, I think having complementary skill sets matter. Mm. So yeah, it happened by chance. This is one of those myths that we bust every time that, uh, you know, it does not need to have, you don't need to know your co-founder for three decades or more. Uh, we met by chance and this is turning out to be a fantastic partnership. So this is their meet cute, as they say. Before we let you go. I'd like to add to that. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Even our Instagram feeds are kind of synced. <laughs> Because everything he watches, I end up watching. And we go like, how did you watch the same thing as I did? It's so probably, both of us weren't on it's probably the same algo, but it does mean that you guys are feeding in the same things. Or just speaking to each other and your phone is listening to you. That is also a very likely possible very, point. Very, very yeah. likely. <laughs> what, oh, I, I missed actually getting the information on how many of these units have you actually sold in India and across? And uh, what is the projection like? Also, are you looking for funding? Are you bootstrapped? How does it work? So yeah, we have so we've sold 25 in uh, already in the market. We're out to do another 25 uh, by March 31st. JD can give you better projections on, on, on the larger numbers that we're looking at. JD, go ahead, please. Yeah. 100 units in the coming year and uh, we are raising funds about $4 million. Uh, the product market fit has been achieved. We, are, we have installed these units in five different states in India and across applications. So we have started at uh, 3BHK house all the way to manufacturing plants. And uh, we've now seen that it works well in kitchen environments, uh, warehouses, uh, health centers, etc. And there's a lot of affordable housing sector that will soon need uh, these sort of alternative cooling technologies mm -hmm. because the fan may not cut it, the AC, they may not be able to afford the electricity bill. And there is an urgent need to look at that market seriously. And JD, if I could lastly ask you, what about fixing it? Um, if it gets broken, I'm assuming because of that this is different from an AC, it's different from a cooler, an ordinary yeah. electrician can't come in there. So how does that work? So the idea is that we've made it as simple as possible. A normal electrician or a plumber can fix these machines. We've used, we've spent close to two and a half years to bring this model to where it is currently. And that includes making it from the point of view of low maintenance. So all our components are easy to maintain. We only have a consumable, with, consumable which is a 20 micron air filter. And that's about it. And there are comprehensive maintenance contracts that we supply, which have similar terms where we either fix or replace things if something goes wrong.